This is the day after the State of the Union address, and as you can imagine, there are some very different perspectives about what we heard from President Joe Biden. Joining us live now from the White House with the latest is our correspondent, John Decker. And John, there's a lot to talk about from last night. You were in the House chamber for that speech, and you get the feeling this might have been the unofficial launch of Biden's 2024 campaign. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that based upon the themes that President Biden put forward last night during the course of his 72 minute long speech. One, he spoke about how COVID is essentially behind us. That brought us standing ovation from both sides of the aisle. And then he also spoke about the things that he got accomplished and has gotten accomplished during the course of his two years in office, most recently the Inflation Reduction Act. And of course, during the first year of his presidency, that bipartisan $1 trillion infrastructure bill that he signed. Uh, the president also said he has unfinished business. More still needs to get done. Those are the kind of words that you hear from someone who's contemplating another four-year run for the White House. John, some Republicans openly heckled President Biden for saying some in the GOP want to, in his words, sunset Social Security and Medicare. First of all, is that claim by the president true? There's a very prominent Republican senator from Florida, Rick Scott. Last year, he was chair of the Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee. And last summer, he put out a proposal that suggested just that, uh, that every five years uh, we should revisit whether or not uh, to reauthorize spending money on these two very important entitlements. But I must tell you, this proposal was not embraced by the Republican Party. Mitch McConnell, for instance, rejected this proposal. Most Republicans rejected this proposal. So it, it's disingenuous on the part of President Biden to suggest that this is part of the Republican Party platform. I think that's the reason why you saw that very vocal reaction coming from Republicans in the House chamber last night. John, is heckling during the State of the Union the new normal? Well, I don't know the answer to that. We'll have to wait and see uh, if this happens again next State of the Union address. But we've seen this in the past, going all the way back to 2009, when Congressman Joe Wilson, Republican from South Carolina, heckled then-President Barack Obama, calling him a liar, saying, you lie, uh, during the course of his State of the Union address. Uh, most recently, just a few years ago, you saw at the conclusion of Donald Trump's State of the Union address, the House Speaker at the time, Nancy Pelosi ripping up his speech. And then, of course, we saw uh, many Republicans last night heckling uh, Joe Biden. I hope it's not the norm going forward. I think that uh, uh, both parties need to be uh, more deferential to the president uh, when uh, he delivers the speech. Uh, but uh, look, you know, I think that what we saw last night is that uh, it came uh, too much to bear for some Republicans. That's the reason why they had to call out the president. You wonder what message that sends to the rest of the world about what's happening here in the United States. And how did Speaker McCarthy react to members of his conference heckling Biden? I don't think he was pleased. Uh, you know, he shook his head no when the president suggested that that was the position of the Republican Party, sunsetting Social Security and Medicare. And in fact, he actually gave instructions to members of the Republican conference in the House, don't call attention to yourself. Don't heckle the president. And uh, of course, uh, that advice was ignored by quite a few Republicans last night, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, who yelled out liar uh, to President Biden. Uh, that being said, it's a very small majority that Kevin McCarthy has right now in the House. I, th I doubt very much he's going to call out any Republicans specifically and ad admonish them publicly in terms of their behavior last night. President Biden is on the road today in Wisconsin to sell his State of the Union proposals. Why Wisconsin? Well, it's a very key battleground state. We saw that first in 2016. That's a state that Donald Trump won by just 20,000 votes in the presidential election. And then four years later, in 2020, Joe Biden won Wisconsin by that same amount, 20,000 votes. It's going to be critical to both political parties 
in the 2024 presidential election. Uh, the president today uh, touting his policies as they benefit manufacturing jobs, specifically unionized manufacturing jobs. And I think this is a big part of what he'll likely pitch uh, if he runs uh, for re-election for four years, an announcement coming in the next few months, and that is that his administration is responsible, he will say, for adding 12 million new jobs to the U.S. economy. John, there was a dust-up of sorts last night between Senator Mitt Romney and Congressman George Santos. Did you see that? What happened? Yeah, I did see that. I'm in the House chamber. I have my binoculars, and, and I saw that they had some words with one another. Mitt Romney uh, was walking down the aisle. He saw George Santos, and according to uh, Mitt Romney, he said, you don't belong here. And why did he say that? It's because of uh, the fact that George Santos uh, lied just about everything about his background, his educational background, his work background, even his family background. Uh, and uh, I think that he was upset, so to speak, that George Santos had a very prominent place on the aisle, shaking hands with various senators, various cabinet members. And later, uh, after the speech was over, Mitt Romney said that George Santos does not belong in Congress. He should resign. And of course, there is an ethics investigation that's being conducted in re regards to him. There's also a criminal investigation that's being conducted by federal prosecutors in New York as it relates to possible financial improprieties by George Santos. So we'll all, all have to wait and see how this plays itself out over the course of the next few months. Our White House correspondent, John Decker, thank you so much.